Welcome to the Sword and Laser uh, video. We are here on a Google Hangout on our brand new YouTube channel. I am Veronica Belmont, joined as always by my co-host Tom Merritt. Hello. I'm playing around with uh, video stuff if you're watching the video version of this. How's it going? <laughs> are you all excited about the ability to fade in and out of things? <laughs> yeah. I'm doing Wirecast fun. Well, why don't you show the thing you are fading out to? Well, yes, of course, <laughs> more important than the book is the actual yes. author, Robin Schneider, is uh, joining us. She is the author of The Beginning of Everything, uh, as well as Severed Heads, Broken Hearts. And thank you for joining us, Robin. Well, thanks for having me. This is so fun. So we met you first at uh, in person at VidCon uh, this past year down in Anaheim. It was in Anaheim, right? I think that was in Anaheim, yes. I've been traveling a lot this summer, so sometimes it's hard to remember exactly where I've been. So <laughs> there was in Anaheim. There was in Anaheim. So what were you at VidCon for? Um, I make YouTube videos also, so I was just at VidCon because I, I think that's the thing to do, right? Make YouTube videos, have friends online, meet them in person at VidCon, meet fans, just sort of hang out and have fun. You Although are we were just like the Renaissance woman because you're a video blogger, you're a published <laughs> author, you're a you're a writer. You're you're writing for TV, right? Um, yes, I I can say a couple of things about that. I'm not sure how much, so I might get like super. Yeah, quiet. don't get yourself in trouble. But I just no, I won't. But I'm absolutely allowed to say that yes, I'm working on a genre show, like an original genre show concept. Uh, with Rob Taffert and uh, I wrote the pilot and we're having a lot of fun sort of putting it together and there's other people involved whom I can't name yet but it's like the most fun thing ever. That's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. But of course we're here today to talk about books. So, so tell us about your writing process, how you got into writing and uh, what your books are about. Sure. Um, yeah, I suppose I read Harry Potter when I was a kid, and I thought it was the most marvelous thing in the world, and I freaked out. I turned to the back, and it was written by a woman, which I had not guessed when I had picked up my copy of the book. This was way, way back before the books were massively popular. This was, like, in the 90s. And I was like, I want to be her. I want to do this. I want to write books that aren't just, like, girl books, but that are epic stories of friendship and bravery and... I don't know, having having a great destiny, and so that was, I guess, how I got started, and then I got a notebook and started writing novels in them. I feel like they were fan fiction. It was like Wizards at Summer Camp, um, but I kept going because it's so important. I guess Neil Gaiman is the one who says to just to finish things, mm. so I just kept finishing things, and eventually they weren't fan fiction shaped anymore. They were more original shaped, so... I realized I had some books, and I contacted literary agents and went from there. I was pretty young, though. I was about 18, so it's all like I've, I've tried to forget very hard. Um, those embarrassing moments of me trying to be super professional at 18, like going to meet literary agents and stuff. That's actually a huge accomplishment for an 18-year-old. I mean, you don't hear a lot about you know high school seniors going out, meeting with publishers, trying to get their, their first novel written. Was that How intense was that for you? Um, it was pretty intense. Like, I had written my first, I suppose, book that I thought was good enough to send out when I was a senior in high school, and I started, like, I suppose, querying my freshman year of college, and that sold my freshman year of college. It's this mediocre, undercooked noodle of a book. <laughs> but, I mean, I think it must have been so much easier back then because we didn't have YouTube and we didn't have Twitter, and the internet was not super distracting. Yeah, there was less to uh, to take away from your focus. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Like I didn't spend my days sending people Snapchats. I just went <laughs> home. We didn't have Facebook, and we didn't have MySpace. And I could either like aim type chat with people, or I could type out a novel. So I felt like I'd already talked to people that day. So a novel sounded more interesting. Well, you seem to be doing pretty good at still putting out the novels. Uh, tell us a little bit about The Beginning of Everything. Sure. Well, The Beginning of Everything is, I suppose, my first, like, big book. And, and we should point out to audio listeners, we mean the book, The Beginning of Everything. We're not asking her to tell her about, you know, about The Beginning of... Oh. Right. No, I'm not going to talk to you about, like, The Big Bang Theory or right. anything, although that's an excellent show. Um, yeah, my book is called The Beginning of Everything. It's also extremely confusingly titled Severed Heads, Broken Hearts in the UK, so it's the same book. 
except gotcha. um, the title got changed for the American edition. It was originally going to be called Severed Heads in the States, too, but it sounded like a zombie apocalypse situation. Um, so I would think that would be a positive, but maybe that's just me. I would think so, too, but it was a massive turnoff for people who read uh, contemporary fiction. They weren't sure what to expect. And I think zombie books in YA coming out in like this climate can read as a little bit of a ripoff um, or an unoriginal concept that people are tired of at this point because there's been so many fantastic series already to that effect. Um, so we just sort of made it less confusing. But the book, um, how did I come up with the idea? I suppose I always wanted to write a book about growing up like misunderstood and miserable in the suburbs. And also uh, I wanted to write a story about kids who can find adventure in like in the real world as opposed to sitting around and going well I didn't get my Hogwarts letter when I was 11 and I didn't get magic powers at 16 so I guess it's over I guess I have to live in the real world now what a bummer I thought well I guess you get to live in the real world now let's find some adventures to have in it now we have some questions from our audience as well, and the first one comes from a uh, longtime listener, Turp Kristen, who wants to know that your your facts is that you you read footnotes in textbooks and find those interesting. Did you read and enjoy Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by any chance? Oh man, um, I have not read it. I have a copy of it, but I think is at my parents' house, and I started, and I think I forgot that it was interesting and left it there, and I really do need to get back to it but mostly for me it's footnotes in medical texts because I studied medicine in graduate school and you'll, you'll see some like weird footnotes and go oh my god really? Um, and then just start well maybe this is just me googling things and then you wind up with a list of like notable people who died at the, at the dinner table or <laughs> um, weird German words that don't have English equivalents. Like schadenfreude? Yeah, I mean, my favorite, I think, is... Am I saying that right? Yeah, you, yeah. you're saying it pretty pretty well. I think Kummerspeck I really like. It translates literally to grief bacon, but it means weight gain caused by emotion-related overeating. Ooh. Okay, I like grief bacon. Just yeah, like grief a, bacon. Just using that as a word. Yeah, I think I'm just going to be like, you guys, like... I'm just having a grief bacon weekend. I'm putting on a little grief bacon this weekend. Don't, <laughs> yeah, don't I'm just going to hashtag all of my food porn Instagrams <laughs> grief bacon from now on. <laughs> That's awesome. And Terp also wants to know, um, how serious is the Social Climber's Guide to High School? I could oh, see it being totally tongue-in-cheek, <laughs> but at the same time, possibly useful for life in general, especially in those formative high school years. Oh, boy. Um, so the Social Climber's Guide to High School is a nonfiction book that I wrote when I was 19 that we hope never to speak of again. Oh, too bad, um, we just brought it up. Yeah, no, I, it's, it's thank you. It's, it is tongue-in-cheek, like, it's, n I am so rarely serious about anything. It really is just a bunch of advice, although I think the book is quite dated now. I think that's really, like, I have, like, a milestone as an author for me to hit, that I have a work that I can say, oh, that's so behind the times, it refers to my space. <laughs> yeah, that is funny to be like. Well, at least it's not it's not Friendster era, but it right, is MySpace. Right. So yeah, Close. I watch well, it. You know, I've I've, I've hap had that happen where I'm watching old TV shows and they'll reference MySpace currently as if it was current, and I'm like, wow, this show. That is old. does not happen. Be uh, uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Really? To me recently. Yep. Oh. Were they doing it as like a deadpan drop, or they meant? No, it? it was an older episode of the show. I'm okay. catching up, right? So it's not like they were doing. So they they were out of touch, but I'm like, oh wow, this episode is old. Like, they're well, still so talking like do it. Do you like, think it's, really it's time to bring out a new version of the book? Maybe do you know an addendum, <laughs> update it a little bit. Put a little Snapchat in there. I don't know that I have that much advice um, for high school students anymore. I think I more just am fascinated by teen culture and want to learn about it as opposed to teach how to do it. Well, you were an author as a high schooler, so what do you have any advice for, for people who are writing in high school? I would say read a lot. Uh, when you read a book that you enjoy, read it again, and then go through and see what it is that you enjoy about it. If it's the length of the scenes, the length of the dialogue that's included, um, if it's you know the, uh, the characters, the humor, really like break down what it is that you enjoy about your favorite things and then see if you can put that into your own writing. 
We got some uh, questions from Casey here. Uh, Casey starts the post, Ich habe drei Fragen. I don't know if I'm saying that even close. To I don't speak really. German. The internet thinks I speak Did, German. Is that a thing? They think you speak German? Yeah. Is that German? That's got to be German. It looks and German you, to me. You I don't know what it means. Question and I will Google Translate. Okay. I have I something. <laughs> I have, I don't know what... I am a jelly is. donut. No, wait a minute. That's Ich bin ein Berliner. Uh, Casey's first question is, what is your favorite poem and or poet? Oh, that's difficult. Um, oh, gosh. I love Shakespeare. I've always loved Shakespeare's poems. I actually had a Shakespeare-themed birthday party when I was nine. But the interesting thing that I think I love about Shakespeare's poetry is that he wrote the sonnets um, when the theaters were closed due to the plague because no one could go see new plays, so there was no call to write plays. Huh. So he wrote poems. Interesting. Also, oh, I think you get to say Shakespeare is your favorite poet and not sound like you're just making it up if you had a birthday party themed on Shakespeare when you were nine. That's pretty impressive. I really did. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> it was like the Tempest themed, and so many of my classmates all like bought me copies of like the complete works of William Shakespeare. That's so cool. which I really like just... a puff paint party. Or you do puff paint on T-shirts, and that's that's the party. I think I had a scavenger hunt or something. By the something. way, it means I have three questions in German. Oh. Ah, okay. okay. That makes sense. So I was okay. right about the I have. I know that in German. You got that much. Yeah. Uh, well, question number two from Casey. Uh, if I looked on your nightstand right now, what book would I find you presently reading? Hmm. It's very well, I just bought... Casey. That's a great question. I just bought Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell, and I haven't read that yet, but apparently it's about a girl who writes like very popular fan fiction about a series that's similar to Harry Potter, so that sounds like it's going to be really fun. And then I'm rereading Theophilus North by Thornton Wilder at the moment, which is sort of magical realism. It's, I suppose, if you could take Downton Abbey and The Great Gatsby, but if the main character had like sort of weird magic powers he didn't want to tell anyone about, but as a novel. That now I want to see that awesome. made into a movie, too. Uh, question number three from Casey. What book do you think more people should read but simply haven't for one reason or another? Hmm. I feel like, again, Theophilus North is fantastic literature. It's so interesting. But I think maybe The Secret History by Donna Tartt I think it's such an interesting story about college and such a cautionary tale against wanting to belong to an elite group like at the expense of who you are. And I feel like it's a modern classic and people who know about it, it's like, oh my god, you know about that. It's sort of like this great weird undercover group. And I know it was very popular, I think, when it came out in, was it the 80s or the early 90s? But it certainly hasn't been something I've been hearing about lately. So do you have any favorite genre authors, uh, people in the sci-fi, fantasy, or even the horror space? Oh, hmm. I grew up reading Piers Anthony, which I think is really obvious because I'm such a pun fanatic. Um, oh, gosh, who am I liking? I love Tamara Pierce. I think she's fantastic, and she writes such fierce female characters. Yeah, I think those two. Diana Wynne-Jones, like everyone needs to grow up reading Diana Wynne-Jones. I'm shocked when people have not read the Crestomancy books. I or... have not. Well, come on, you have to. They're they didn't amazing. exist when I grew up, so I have an excuse. She wrote Howl's Moving Castle, too, which was turned into like the Hayao Miyazaki film. Oh, but, wow. Yeah, those are nice. really fantastic books. All right, I'll have to check those out. Uh, are, they, are they YA or are they They're adult like, novels? Middle grade, they're younger. In terms of like adult writers, uh, Connie Willis, I really like to say nothing of the dog. Mm -hmm. um, I just thought that was fantastic because it did what Doctor Who does, where it's sci-fi and time travel, but it goes back in time. So. Nice. And then our, our last question comes from, or last group of questions really comes from Phoebe, who wants to know, is Violet ever going to make a return, or is she gone for good? I think I remember somewhere that Nightly was going to be a trilogy, but I can't quite remember. Um, that's a very good question. I wrote the Knightley Academy series under the pen name Violet Haberdasher because they said I could have a pen name, so I picked a ridiculous one. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Which is sort of like when I was nine and they said I could have a birthday party, so I picked Shakespeare themed. Um, I don't know. I would love to finish telling the Knightley Academy stories, 
but I moved to a different publisher, so I'm not certain how feasible it is, but I definitely am open to the idea of it. Cool. And then the second part of the question, um, uh, we already actually answered, which was why do you have different book titles uh, for the <laughs> same book in different countries? We covered that. And is there a chance at SHBS or TBOE to be optioned for a film? Uh, would you want it to, or would you prefer to just have it stay as the original text? I like those little uh, acronyms there. Yeah, we call it. I call the book TBOE. Um, TBOE. I think it sounds so cute, right? The beginning of everything, TBOE. <laughs> It sounds like a really glam rock tea party. Um, <laughs> it's very steampunk, yeah. Exactly. I would, yeah, I would love to see the beginning of everything made into a film. I know the book to film agent has been going out on that recently, and I did have a meeting where it came up that I don't think I am allowed to talk about on peril of death. Um, nothing is definite now, but yeah, I really hope that there would be a film adaptation in the future. Awesome. Do you have, like, when you write things like this, is that kind of in the back of your mind? And while you do so, are you thinking about what actors you would like to play as your main characters? Um, no, it hasn't been in my mind. I think because I haven't written a book since I've moved to Los Angeles and gotten more involved in the television industry, now it's just at the front of my mind because, you know, I go to meetings and people are like, oh, what are you working on? And before I've even written chapter one of my next book, you know, so many producers know the title and know what it's about already just because of, you know, lunch meeting conversation. So that's definitely a massive change from the past. But no, it's not something that I think about. In terms of actors, I mean, I just like to, if I can pull something up on Netflix now, I assume that that's just what the actor looks like currently, even though this is so not the case. So, you know, I'll watch the first season of The O.C., and I'll be like, oh, yeah, Adam Brody is Ezra. And, of course, he's, like, 30-something now, so no way. But, no, I, I can't even fantasy cast. But I have been seeing people using, like, the hashtags and doing fantasy casting on Tumblr for the book. And that is so cool because, first of all, I'm learning who the actors are, and second of all, it's fan art. So when is that not awesome? That is pretty awesome. Do you want to continue to write books, and do you think you'll be able to, given all of the amazing stuff that you're trying to juggle now? Um, yeah, I love writing novels. I think it's so much fun to sit down at the end of the day and not have to worry about the practicality of you know, staying within budget or using locations that we can see again or you know, not having six actors wind up in a massive confrontation with the bad guy in the hallway where you somehow need to get camera and boom and everything in there, which I definitely, that was the first, I think when I realized I had to think cinematically, it was so different because I like guidelines, but sometimes when I'm telling stories, I just like to not have to worry. So that's why I think I really want to keep with novels. Yeah, that's a really good point. You don't have anything but the story guiding you when you write, right? Uh, whereas when you're writing for TV movies, I don't think a lot of people realize that the story does have to be filmable. It does have to be possible, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's hard, you know, because I'll think of a location and it's a, it's a throwaway location. It's something where we're going to need to move, you know, like three of the main actors to this one spot and it's just, it's not feasible. And it's, that's, I think, been my crash course out here is learning all of the things that are possible in fiction that are not possible in screenplay. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Where can people follow your work online and keep up with all the cool things that you're doing? <laughs> well, everyone can find me on Twitter. I am always on Twitter. It's just slash Robin Schneider. And I'm also on YouTube. I make weird trivia videos, um, sometimes about German words, but not in German, because I don't speak German. It's also my name on YouTube. Um, Instagram, Tumblr, I am just all over the Internet. It's a sad thing. And you can no, find it's links a wonderful to all that thing. stuff at robinschneider.com. That's R-O-B-Y-N-S-C-H-N-E-I-D-E-R. I was showing that off already, Tom. I, was, I clicked it on it. Well, I pushed the camera because I'm a director. But thank you guys so much for having me. This was a blast. Of course, and if you guys want to follow our work online, uh, everything is over at swordandlaser.com. And if you want to send us an email, the address is feedback at swordandlaser.com. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Robin. Thanks.